the Buddha said that most people, when they encounter pain, have two reactions. The first reaction is bewilderment, not understanding why it's there, why it's happening. The other reaction is trying to find a way out. Is there somebody who knows a way to get away from this pain? So it's bewilderment and a search. That's how we normally respond to pain. The problem is that many of the people we go to for help, they themselves don't really understand pain. And so the advice they give can maybe give a little bit of relief, but it doesn't really put us past the problem of having to suffer over the pain. Fortunately, we have the teachings of the Buddha. You look at his teachings, it begins right there with a the problem of pain. Dukkha, Pali term, means suffering, stress, pain. And it's all about explaining what the pain is and how it happens, and what we can do to put an end to the cause. Because all too often we don't deal with the cause. We try to fight off the pain immediately without looking at well, what's really causing the pain, especially if it, when you're talking about the suffering in the mind. What's causing the suffering? There may be pain in the body. But the mind doesn't have to suffer from that. As I say, pain is normal, but suffering is optional. And it's understanding why that is. That's how we can get past the pain. The first thing to understand is that the pains we experience come from two kinds of action or two kinds of karma. There's actions in the past. They gave us this body that we have, and they gave us the body in the shape it's in right now. All the things we've done with this body, we don't. Part of it, of course, is what comes from past lifetimes, and part of it's what we've done in this lifetime. What you've done with the body? Have you exercised properly? Have you fed it properly? That also has an impact on how much pain there's going to be in the body. But those are just potentials. The actual pain comes from the combination of past potentials plus your actions in the present moment. And it's right here that we can make a difference. And fortunately, it's the actions we're doing right now. Those are creating the kind of pain in the mind that's actually causing the mind to suffer. If we change our actions, the mind doesn't have to suffer. So first we have, this, have to have this understanding that the fact that there's pain in the body does not have to make us suffer. So we turn around and look at the Problem of what is it bringing that pain into the mind? This is where we see there are two things, basically. One is our intention, and the other is our perceptions. What are your intentions around the pain? For most of us, we want to just get rid of it or run away from it. But the Buddha said it's something we have to comprehend. So how do you comprehend it? Well, you look for the cause. First you see, well, what is actually pain here, and then you look for the cause. So instead of dealing with the pain right away, or trying to get rid of the pain right away, we have to watch it for a while. This is like going into a house, and finding the house is full of smoke. Most of us, and we know, of course, now, that if you're, there's smoke, there's a, you've got to find the fire if you want to get rid of the smoke. But the way we deal with our pain is it's like trying to put out the smoke. The more you put out the smoke, put out the smoke, but the fire is still burning, so there's going to be more smoke and more smoke. So you've got to look for the cause, what's causing things to come in. And a lot of it has to do with our perceptions, the perceptions that lead to the craving that makes the pain burdensome to the mind. So the first thing you want to do is to strengthen the mind so it has the courage and the strength of morale to try to comprehend the pain. This is why we work with concentration. It gives us the strength we need. So the first two steps in dealing with pain are, one, both are basically concentration, trying to get the mind to be still. And if the pain hasn't arisen yet, okay, if you know where pains happen to arise or tend to arise as you meditate, work on that area. Let the breath flow through that area. 
And sometimes you find that the problem isn't right where the pain is. There may be a blockage in the breath someplace else. Like sometimes there's a pain in you, right where the leg comes into the body, or joins with the body, right there in the hip. But it's not a problem with the lack of circulation there. It's the circulation isn't, isn't going well in the back of your neck or in the middle of the back. This is why you start up there with the top of the back and then go down and think of the breath energy going all the way down the spine, and all the way out the leg. Wherever there's tension that tends to tighten up in those areas, okay, allow it to relax. This is the preemptive strike. The second step is if the pain has actually arisen, okay, don't go focusing on the pain quite yet. Gather your forces. In other words, find a part of the, the body where there's no, it's not in pain, and allow your attention to settle there. It doesn't have to be intensely pleasant, but just pleasant enough so that you feel at ease settling there. Now the mind is going to keep telling you there's pain, pain, pain over there, focus over there. You don't have to listen to it. don't have to believe it. Sure enough, there may be pain there, but you don't have to focus there. You don't have to get in the line of fire. You're in the midst of gathering your strength so that you have a stable place inside the body where you can stay. This is good to know because there are times when you're going to be dealing directly with the pain and it becomes to get a little over overwhelming where you know you've got your safe place to go back to. Once that safe place is strong, then there's the third step, which is to think of the good breath energy from that safe spot going over and going right through the pain. For example, if the pain's in the knee, think of the breath energy going down the leg and then through the knee and then continue on down out to the toes. In other words, don't stop right at the pain. Think of the breath energy going through. That changes one of your perceptions about the pain right there. Many times the pain feels like a wall. But if you think of the energy going through it, you begin to realize, okay, it's not well, it's, it's porous. And it's not as solid as you thought it was. And sometimes when you do this, the pain actually goes away. It was a pain caused by tension, a pain caused by bad circulation in the body. And when you've improved the circulation of the breath and the blood, okay, the pain goes away. Other pains don't go away that easily. There's more old karma in there. And when you're ready for the fourth step, which is once the mind has been strengthened by its concentration and you've gotten rid of as much tension and tightness around the pain as you can, then you can go in and look at the pain directly and ask questions. Asking questions here is important because what you're going to be dealing with is your underlying perceptions around the pain. And sometimes those are hard to track down because they're very strange. Many of these are perceptions you picked up when you were a child. Even before you knew how to talk, you were already dealing with pain. And the perceptions that come from that time are sometimes buried down inside the mind. So you have to ask strange questions to get those perceptions out into the open. Like you can ask yourself, what's the shape of the pain? What's the color? Where is the most intense spot right now? If you look carefully, you see that the pain is not a solid thing. It's something that moves around. It appears and disappears. It appears and disappears back and forth, back and forth, up and down. And simply because we had the perception that it was the same thing as the, say, the knee, same thing as the body where the pain was. And that's what made it seem solid. After all, the body is solid, so the solidity of the body gets glommed together with the pain of the pain. So it becomes solid pain. But learn how to question that. The, is the body the same thing as the pain? The body is something physical. Pain is something mental. They may lie in the same spot, but it's like there are different frequencies, like the radio waves here in the sala. The radio waves from San Diego, from Los Angeles, Tijuana, Phoenix, whatever. They're all here in the sala. And if you put a radio in here, you can pick up the different ones at different times. They're all in the same place, but you learn to tune in to one frequency, and you get the frequency you want, and you can hear what you want. 
even though they're all in the same place, you can sort them out. It's the same way with the body and the pain. It's like they're different frequencies. Pain is one thing, body is something else. The pain comes and goes, moves here, moves there. You can ask yourself, does the pain have an intention? Because again, as a child you may have thought this pain came and it's, a, it's intentionally attacking you. Well, that's not the case. It's just there. And it comes and goes. And why get worked up about it? Part of us says, well, evolution has told us to be on the lookout for pain. Well, evolution's purposes are one thing. Our purposes are something else. So learn how to question your perceptions around the pain until you see exactly which perceptions are the ones that are creating the, the bridge into the mind. And learn how to drop those perceptions. You don't have to believe everything you think, no matter how convincing it may be. If it's causing pain in the mind, suffering in the mind, you don't need it. Because what you're doing is you're questioning here, is you're taking a more active and aggressive role with the pain. And when you're aggressive, the pain has trouble hitting you. If you're just sitting still or trying to run away, okay, it can shoot you as much as it likes. But if you're more aggressive and you're probing here and asking there and looking here, you're harder to hit. Or even better, you can hold the perception in mind that you're sitting in the back of one of those old station wagons where the back seat faced backwards. If anything came into the range of your, your vision, it was going away. As soon as it appeared, it starts going away. This is good for curing the perception we have that the pain is coming at us, as if we're sitting at the front of the car facing forward and everything seems to be coming at us. But if you look at it, okay, as soon as a moment of pain arises, it goes away. It arises, goes away. It's not striking you at all. It's just something happening. And it's leaving you, leaving you, leaving you. If you hold that perception in mind, it becomes a lot easier to stay with the pain and yet not suffer from it. So what we're doing here is changing our understanding of the pain, changing our intention around the pain. We're here not to run away from it, but we're here to understand it, to comprehend it. And then changing our perceptions, all of which are our present karma. When you change your present karma until it's more skillful, okay, then you realize you can be with the potentials for all kinds of things coming in from the past, but you don't have to suffer from them. It's making this distinction that allows us to find release from suffering, the end of suffering in this lifetime. Because after all, people like the Buddha and the Arahants, they still had bodies, they still had physical pains, but they learned how to relate to the pain in a way that it didn't cause the mind to suffer. So learn how to make that distinction. To realize that the suffering that we impose on ourselves comes all from our current actions, so we can change our current actions. This is why we meditate change our intentions, change our perceptions, so we can reach that point where whatever comes up in the body, it doesn't have to have an impact on the mind. And that's how you realize the cessation of suffering. So follow the path, because it takes you there. And the path is right here, staying with the breath. The power of the concentration created mind gives you the strength and the nourishment and the courage to deal with pain. So work on making your concentration strong, because that's the foundation for everything else.